Hello everybody, this is Mr. Brackett with an instructional video on Lightspeed Classroom. Lightspeed Classroom is a tool that we had uh, a few years back um, and then we dropped the licensing um, but then uh, had a number of staff members ask for a tool like this and so Central Office um, repurchased the licensing and now this video should help you uh, get up and running with Lightspeed Classroom. So Lightspeed Classroom is available uh, via a web browser if you go to classroom.relay.school. And so um, if you put that into a browser window uh, like this one, what you'll notice uh, when you go in for the first time is you'll probably end up facing a login screen, uh, except uh, that the website uses cookies uh, then sign in with your Google credentials. Uh, when you click on this button, you'll get a chance to pass your uh, campus credentials to uh, Lightspeed Classroom. Uh, and then once you do that, uh, you should end up at a screen that looks like this. Um, and so this video will just very quickly get you oriented to what it is that you're seeing here. Uh, you see classroom up in the upper left hand corner and then beneath it you'll see a list of classes. Uh, these are classes that uh, you have set up Google Classrooms for. Um, the video I sent out previously that said uh, make sure you get your Google Classrooms in order uh, this is why uh, Lightspeed Classroom pulls information from Google Classroom and so uh, these are the Google Classrooms that I have set up uh, if you have a class that you're not seeing uh, when you hit this drop down menu it's because you don't have a Google Classroom set up for that uh, since Lightspeed's pulling uh, from Google Classroom um, but the thing that you'll want to do once you're in here um, individually you'll want to do this for each of the classes uh, when you have one of the classes selected you want to choose more options and class settings and the most important thing for you to do is to uh, set up a schedule for your classes uh, and you'll want to do this by selecting a custom type um, class schedule um, and so once you do that uh, this will appear and you want to choose uh, business days and also the start time and end time uh, for your class now it's very very important that you make sure that these are accurate because what this is going to do is it will take control of student Chromebooks during that period of time uh, for you uh, which means if you get this wrong, uh, you'll end up taking control of student Chromebooks um, and those students will end up being in other classes. And because they're in other classes and you didn't pay attention to the proper start time and end time for those classes, you now have control of those instead of somebody else. And then I'll have to come in and break up the fight and I don't want to do that. Um, so just make sure that you select a proper schedule Monday through Friday start times and end times need to be accurate uh, once you click save on that uh, then those settings will be in place um, that's really one of the only things that you'll need to do to get this up and running and what you should see is for your course uh, up here in the upper left hand corner you'll see a list of students and so um, because I'm doing this video during a time that I don't have computer science um, these students aren't showing up the way that they would normally show up um, but if this were computer science class uh, time uh, these students would all be showing up and because uh, they have their Chromebooks turned on and they're logged in um, I would see uh, each of them signed in uh, to their Chromebooks and these images uh, these little circles uh, would be different shades of orange uh, or yellow 
Uh, if they're yellow, it means that the students are accessing very few websites um, while they're online. Uh, if it's a dark, dark orange, the student is pulling a lot of web activity. And so uh, you use this little uh, key down here to let you know how active the student is being. You'll also see information over here on the left, which will give you a breakdown of where the students are going. Uh, if they're browsing to places uh, that you don't want them browsing to, you'll be able to check the list that's on uh, the left-hand side here and see what websites students are accessing. Uh, the other thing that is very valuable uh, is to be able to click this down here uh, where it says show all screens. Uh, I can't click it now because again this class isn't in session. But if it were and I clicked show all screens, uh, I'd get a little pop-up message that says, are you sure you want to do this? And you click yes. Uh, and then you get a visual of what each individual student is, do, is seeing on their screen. And the cool thing about this is when you click on individual students, you'll see uh, if they're in your class, uh, you'll see an image in this area of what it is that they're seeing on their screen and underneath you'll see a list of different tabs that they have open. Uh, you'll be able to take control of the student's Chromeba Chromebook to a certain extent. Uh, you'll be able to close uh, tabs that they have open that you don't want them uh, using. Um, and so um, being able to access the students and what it is that they're doing on their Chromebooks um, is pretty valuable. And so um, you'll also, once a class is in session, you could lock the screens of the Chromebooks if you need students to be paying attention to you and instead they're all staring at their Chromebooks. Uh, you could lock those student Chromebook screens um, or you could share a screen. Uh, if you want students to see what's on your screen, you could click share screen and push uh, what it is that you're seeing on your screen. Uh, down to those students. And so this is really the basic function of uh, Lightspeed Classroom. Um, and again, this is just to help to get you started uh, using the tool. And so uh, hopefully uh, you'll be able to roll this out in your classrooms. Uh, and if you have any questions, uh, feel free to reach out and let me know. Thanks.